Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Models and Memories Weekly, episode 29. Models and Memories is a show about nothing and it is filmed in front of a live studio audience. And stay tuned all the way till the end to see a montage of painted minis courtesy of the EOB Complete community. This is a show where I talk about my painting, modeling, and working experiences from the week, and I end every episode with a story. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, you put out three YouTube videos a week and you stream every single night. Ha! Could you possibly have more to say? Well, I do. And here goes. This was a crazy week. It might have been even longer than a week. But, uh, Games Workshop came out with tons and tons of stuff, and I want to sh- lightning round through them all so that we can get to what I really want to talk about, which is if FOMO is real or not. Is the fear of missing out force Games Workshop using their evil psychology to force us into buying the stuff that we don't want to buy? Or is it just pretty typical consumer product relationship? All right, first off. Grimaldus. The new Grimaldus of the Black Templars came out and he looks really, really good. Once again, he's a pretty faithful adaptation of the old Grimaldus. It's not the same sculpt, or it's not the same pose. It's a new pose, but it's kind of the same sort of thing. This pose is based off an artwork, which is just how Games Workshop does it now. Every model, every model that's a refresh has to be based one-to-one off of a piece of artwork, which I do like. I like that, but also I wouldn't mind seeing some like brand new things. The the, tri- the trouble with it is that uh, I wouldn't mind seeing a brand new thing, but if it was brand new and I didn't like it, I probably wouldn't buy it. But something that I already like, even though it doesn't completely blow me away, it's much safer bets. Like, you know, it'd be really cool maybe if Grimaldus was doing like a superhero landing or something, or, but, uh, but then some people might be like, eh, I don't like that as much as the old one, so I'm not gonna get it. So I get it. A few weirdos like me are probably thinking, I would love to see something crazy and wild, but the vast majority of people are probably gonna be like, good, something I am already sure I like. I will buy it. So, but anyway, I love this model. I don't wanna sound down on it. This model is great. I like everything about it. I like his weird skull knees. I like his new Crozius that has like a little incense burner on the bottom. I like his big old Primaris plasma gun. I like that the weapons are chained to him. I like that his his broken sword on his backpack. This model is a 10. I also love his like gnashing te- angry teeth on his helmet. It's really, really fun. And it's very, it's very faithful to the old one. His new retinue, or rather his old retinue brought into the modern age look incredible. Uh, and I really, really like what they did with the banner where they have a crucified heretic on it which is awesome because I found skeleton, plastic skeleton models and I put crucified heretics on my Black Templar. So it's good to see that Games Workshop uh, likes my idea. It couldn't possibly be that two people had the same idea. They stole from me. Uh, yeah. Uh, my lawyers will be talking with their lawyers soon. After Grimaldus, which is 10 out of 10, uh, after that, we had the Castellan. Oh, I love this Castellan model. Once again, a one-to-one recreation of an art piece, but I really, really like it. I like that he's a big fat guy. I think that's awesome. Uh, He really looks chunky because of the armor. And I know there was some debate online if this guy was Primaris or if he was Firstborn. I don't think it matters. Uh, It's, who cares? Uh, Primaris and Firstborn are like almost the exact same thing. I know they're not. No, they're the same thing. But I love this guy. His armor is cool. His He's imposing. He feels a little bit like an old metal model because uh, he's very like, all of his body parts are on the same plane. You see that a lot with metal models where, cause they have to, they're usually either two part spin molds. And then, so you'll usually see the entire body fit onto like one plane of existence. And then like the gun that you glue on after the fact is on a 90 degree angle. And he feels a lot like that. I really, really dig it. He's super cool, he's dressed to the nines, he's super bedazzled, and I absolutely love it. Really, I'm more excited about this guy than I am some of like the the Black Templar that have been brought back that are just a little bit more direct one-to-one remakes of what came before, but super cool. These are the new Black Templar Sword Brethren, not to be confused with the classic Space Marine Blade Guard veterans. Whew, those names are getting real close. But uh, I wonder if it's gonna be like, if you're a Black Templar player, you never touch the sword, or you never touch the Blade Guard veteran, you always use Sword Brethren, because Black Templars, because you can, it also seems like you can take a heavy bolt pistol and a power sword. 
I guess you can't take a storm shield, so maybe that's the thing that separates them, but they feel awfully similar. But I super duper love these guys. They all look good, except for maybe... Uh, they all look good, but one guy is holding a full-sized, like, Primaris bolt gun with a combi plasma, and it looks a little ridiculous. Like, Space Marines always look ridiculous, because they're ridiculous proportions, but we kind of fixed the proportions with the whole Primarisization, and now it looks really weird that he's holding like a gigantic gun that's longer than his arm in one hand and I'm holding the sword in the other hand. It's a little weird. I think I would probably either cut it down so that it's a little bit of a smaller gun, or maybe I'll just go ahead and put an old, uh, an old combi bolter on his, on his arm. That probably should actually look really good. I really like what they did with the new Lightning Claws. Lightning Claws have always kind of been in a weird spot. I think way back in second edition, Lightning Claws were like, an enhanced version of a Power Fist, and that's why Lightning Claws are attached to Power Fists, even though they, they're not nearly as strong as a Power Fist. And so now it's just kind of a gauntlet that fits over a normal uh, Space Marine arm. And it looks really, really good. It's got like Wolverine Claws kind of a look. It reminds me a lot of Kayvon Shrike, the, uh, the captain of the Raven Guard. He had a very similar thing, where he's got normal hands with like the Power Gloves on them, and then he's just got this thing that fits on top. And I really, really like that look. I think it's good. I think it makes sense. Uh, I guess I'll miss the old fisty McBlade hands, but it never made sense. Like, why does he have power fists if he doesn't have the power that comes along with power fists? But one thing that is making me wonder about these guys, these wonderful, wonderful sword brethren, is they all have a unique loadout. And I wonder, it's making me a little bit nervous that... Uh, it's going to be a mixed loadout squad, which I'm in two minds about because number one, it looks awesome. It looks super cool that everyone has a unique loadout, but it really is a pet peeve of mine in the game. Mixed loadout squads because all of a sudden it becomes, all right, I'm going to shoot you. All right, I'm going to roll for my multi or for my heavy bolter. And then I'm going to roll for my stubba. And then I'm going to roll for my storm bolter. And then I'm going to roll my seven normal bolter shots. And then I'm going to roll my grenade like, all of a sudden, it's a whole lot of work, and your be the benefits is almost nothing. Like, it's kind of cool in the list building phase to be like, hmm, am I going to go with a plasma gun or a melta gun? They, they're they both good for taking out heavy armor, and they're both almost the same thing. It's just, it, it it's, it's interesting in that stage of the game, but when you're sitting down and you're playing the game, it barely matters. The biggest offenders for this is the, uh, the new Primaris vehicles. I have two Redemptor Dreadnoughts that are super fun in-game, but, holy cow, they each have like six guns apiece. And so it's like, all right, now I'm rolling for my macro cannon. Now I'm rolling for my Gatling cannon. Now I'm rolling for my grenade cannon. Now I'm rolling for my anti-air cannon. Now I'm rolling for my... It just becomes like, just give me one really good gun so that I can be like, all right, my Dreadnought is gonna, is gonna destroy you. That's all I want. I don't want it to be like, well, that didn't hit, but maybe this one will hit, and this and this one, and this one. Don't like it. Um... So the mixed loadout, it looks really, really cool. It'll be fun to like play with in the list building stage, but I do hope there's enough bits to load everyone out with whatever option I want. Probably the lightning claws, they look really, really cool. Um, so we'll see if it's going to be kind of an only mixed loadout squad or if they're gonna put enough stuff in the box. Is this gonna be a repeat of the Chaos Terminators? Probably the most egregious modern case of not putting enough bits in the box. Awesome models, but not nearly enough weapon options. But, and, you know, all these models are awesome. 10 out of 10. And then finally, the upgrades and transfers. Now this is uh, surprisingly faithful to the old Black Templar upgrade sprue, which was kind of an amazing sprue uh, by itself. Really no other chapter had something like that. It was, I think it was like a two or three frame box that just came with unbelievable amount of Black Templar goodness. The Dark Angels also got a similar box, but no other Space Marine chapters did. And it looks really, really good. What's interesting is it comes with a bunch of scout arms carrying shotguns. And I wonder if that is because the Crusader kit that comes with scouts and initiates for the Black Templar, they seem to be all loaded out with bolt guns or uh, swords, and, swords and pistols. And so I wonder if this is giving them that shotgun option because you're probably gonna own the Crusader box and this upgrade sprue. So I wonder if that's just a way to give you everything. But I like the shotguns, I think they're cool. And they're never really, they haven't been good in game. I mean, scouts haven't really been good in game for a long time, but uh, hopefully, hopefully that changes. But 
really some of the new stuff I see on the sprue is really what's gotten me excited. I love the Psyker skull. I mean, Black, one thing that is often forgotten about the Black Templars is they absolutely hate Psykers. They hate them so much. And so it's really, really cool that he's carrying around the skull of a dead Psyker just to be like, we kill these things. I also love the sword with the weird little spikes on the end. Uh, it's, uh, does it say Judicar or Judiciar on the side? I think this is another Judiciar blade, which I already have a Judiciar built. And so I think I'm gonna have to build a whole nother one just so that I can use this Black Templar sword. It's gonna be awesome. And then just some little oddities I love, like a foot. There's just a skeleton foot. And I can't wait to put that onto like my hero guy because he's carrying around some saint's foot. And then the one piece to me that might be worth the price of admission is this banner that is creepily draped over a skeleton. I absolutely, absolutely adore that bit. It is super, super cool. Definitely gonna be adding it to my collection. So that is all of the new Black Templar stuff and it is super duper exciting. Am I gonna be picking up the new Black Templar start collecting starter box limited edition super cool thingy? Eh, probably not. I definitely want probably two boxes of Crusade Squads and I definitely want that new uh, new uh, Marshall model. But eh, I don't really care about the Redemptor Dreadnought. I don't care about the limited edition codex and I don't care about the cards. So I don't, I don't see jumping on this box just because I only want half. If I wanted everything in that box, it would definitely make more sense as a buy, but eh. And that's that's what that's what always gets me about these uh, these FOMO fear of missing out battle boxes. I don't see them as an egregious affront to the community or to the hobby. I think it's just a thing, a marketing tool. Cause you don't have to buy them. There's nothing particularly, the only thing limited in those boxes really is time. Do you want to get it a few weeks earlier than most people? If that's worth it to you? But I also feel like that point falls moot because this is a hobby that is so big and broad I mean, if you just take an army like orcs, orcs just got a whole bunch of cool new stuff. But what else, you know what else is cool and new? Every orc model you don't already own. Like if you're, you're just like, I need the new orc mega scrappa daka blasta squig. But you could also just get ludas and they're gonna be new and exciting to you. And that's what, I just don't feel like the fear of missing out. Maybe I'm weird, but I just feel like FOMO is not that real, especially with Games Workshop. If you take something like Lego, Lego sets are only around for like a year or two. They keep rotating them out. And so you kind of got to pull the trigger if you see a Lego set you really, really want. But for Games Workshop models, that, that box comes out and you're like, ooh, I really want that new model. But it's only available in this really gosh darn expensive box. But uh, I guess I better buy it. Don't buy it. It's going to be sold individually on its own in like a month or two. And then it's going to be available on its own for years and years. It's just going to become another available thing to buy. I would definitely, definitely think it is a scummy thing if it was like the new Hellbrecht model, the the model for the Black Templars. If you're a Black Templar player, you need Hellbrecht. And he's only available. We're only going to make 2,000 of them and they're only going to come in this box. That's $353.69. Then I'd be like, that's a problem. They're, they're putting the thing you need behind a paywall. But I mean, you can just buy, you can buy Hellbrecht in a couple months. It'll be fine. You can buy three if you want. It doesn't matter. And the, the, the codex with the pretty picture on the front, it is a very pretty picture. But eh, I'm a little burnt out on codexes anyway, because I've bought so many of them over the years. It really does. It really is a bummer that it's a supplement and not a proper codex. But I, I can handle just the normal codex down the line. I don't need the pretty picture one. I can, you know what? I could print out that pretty picture. Little, little double stick tape, slap that on the cover, and then look at me go, it's like I bought the limited edition box. I don't know, I feel like this is not a hobby with a lot of impulse buys. There certainly can be impulse buys, but uh, it doesn't require them, or really, it doesn't incentivize them. Because with the game, if you play the game, if you're not just collecting miniatures, there's reasons to buy things. Like you're like, ooh, my army is lacking a heavy support choice. I need something to crack armor. So let me look at what options are available. And then all of a sudden it becomes about uh, play styles. Do you like close combat? Do you like shooting? Do you like fast moving vehicles? Do you like to castle up and be a shooting wall? 
And so all of those decisions play into what you buy. And so I feel like it's not as much a, ooh, I really like that sweater. And who knows if that sweater is gonna be available next week. I better buy it now. I know you're not supposed to wear white after Labor Day, but I think I need this. It's just like, you, there's rules almost for what you should and can buy for your, to, to make your army grow. I don't know, the fear of missing out, it's never been one that's particularly captured my attention. Sometimes they come out with a new box, like the Age of Sigmar Dominion, and I'm like, I, you know what, I've always had my eye on Age of Sigmar, and that box looks like if I get that and paint it, I will be able to play Age of Sigmar in the very near future, and so I bought it, because it seemed like a really good deal for me. But for someone who's like, I don't care about Age of Sigmar, don't buy the box! It's that easy! I think FOMO, I think FOMO is a, is a little bit of a silly, a silly topic. And speaking of another example of FOMO, I heard a lot of nasty marketing claims about the new Kill Team shapes, the movement to, uh, the movement dials. And it, it is true, the only, I mean, there's we can only speculate, but why instead of one, two, three, six, in Kill Team all movements are measured in, in uh, imperial inches, one, two, three, six, They've changed it to triangle, circle, square, pentagon in a bizarre move that is weirdly easy to ignore. But the new Kill Team Essentials, presumably they put on all those shapes to force us to buy the Kill Team Essentials box. How are you going to measure and play this game without the uh, made for the game games workshop templates that are $35? Well, weirdly, if you read on the very first page of the rules of, of Kill Team, it says that this is how the measuring tools work, but everything is measured in normal inches, and if you want to use a tape measure, that's completely fine. And then in the next paragraph, it says the dimensions of the six barricades that, that box also comes with, if you want to make your own. So it's a weird little thing of Games Workshop maybe is trying to get some sales of these Kill Zone Essentials, but they're also making it incredibly easy to not buy the essentials and just use what you already have. I mean, who doesn't have a tape measure and something that could be two inches by one inch? Seems pretty easy. But one really adorable thing I noticed with the Kill Team Essentials is somebody at Games Workshop is making an awesome joke because it looks like a penis. If you look at the box, they put the rod and then the two smaller sections in, in a very specific way which doesn't even make sense because with the two Kill Team tokens, you're meant to put them together to make the Kill Team logo and they decided to separate them and then to put the long rod right in the middle. It's pretty awesome. And it's funny enough on the website, but it's also on the box art. I absolutely love it. Somebody at Games Workshop had a really, somebody in the photography department really had a fun day with that. I absolutely love it. So is Games Workshop using the fear of missing out to choke a little bit more money out of the customer? Yeah, probably, but isn't that everything? It's always, it's still up, completely up to the customer to do whatever we want, and it seems like for the most part, Games Workshop still incentivizes you to do whatever you want and have all the options in the world in front of you on what to choose to buy, so. Eh, fear of missing out, I'm not that afraid. Sometimes I'll just miss out, and that is completely fine. But that is the news. What I was working on this week was I actually got to build some models, which is awesome. I don't often get to build models and I especially don't often get to take my time building models, but I've built up three kill teams and I'm very excited. Death Guard, Incursor Space Marines, and Sisters Repentia. I'm really excited to see how these Sisters Repentia play on the tabletop because they're very fragile, but they hit like a ton of bricks and I absolutely adore close combat and kill team. So I cannot wait to get some paint on these three kill teams. But all of that is what I got up to this week. So this show is called Models and Memories Weekly and that is because of the memories associated with the models. And this week I would like to talk about something you've probably all noticed. New set. Over the years here at Eons of Battle Incorporated LLC initiative, uh, we have gone through a lot of different sets and every single one it brings a little tear to my eye as I think back on it. Although I think this is my favorite one. It's pretty cool. I remember from humble beginnings when we had a folding table and like can lights that we bought from Ace Hardware with pieces of paper like duct taped to them 
Because we didn't, you know, you set the, we knew how to make YouTube videos. You set the camera to auto. You put it a little too close so it can't focus. And then you're good. You're golden. And then since then, we moved on to having a proper table and a lamp. I think we, I think we had probably maybe a single top lamp then maybe a side lamp somewhere. And then we moved on to the set you guys saw last year where we had some shelves tucked in a corner and then me tucked in front of the corner. And that set looks very spacious on camera, but in reality, I had to really shimmy to get out from behind that thing. It was very small and very cramped and somewhat uncomfortable, but made some decent videos on that. You know what? Some good videos in that space. And then we decided that we could really take it up a notch. And we built the most amazing YouTube sets that ever existed, only to be surpassed by this new set. That set, we used the same shelves, but we punched the backs out of them. And then we hung a curtain and we projected light onto the curtain. And that really was kind of nice. But the only problem with that set is it really limited us on how we could film. We could only film in one direction because we had pipes that were holding up all of our equipment. And so we didn't really want the pipes in shot. And so we had to film we could film here, we could maybe move 20 degrees that way, we could move 20 degrees that way, and that was it. But now, but now look at all you can see. The, the sky is the limits. We can do anything we want, and I'm very, very excited. But boy, oh boy, do I have lots and lots of memories of those old sets. Having a good time making videos, having a horrible time making videos, enjoying the painting process, sweating because I'm not getting my painting done fast enough. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was lots and lots of fun. But I'm very excited about this new set. All my minis, all my minis are on the wall. It's super cool. They've always been in bins. And now they're on the wall and I can look at them. And it's very, very cool. I even have just a little bit of room, which we all know what that means. I need to buy a lot more models. I mean, that's the only possible option. But ah, I miss... I don't miss the old days, but I remember them, especially when I rewatch some of those old videos, which are hard, which are hard for me to watch because I don't just see what's in front of me. I see what was behind the camera that day. I remember literally being in high school and every weekend we would meet up and literally crank out as many videos as we possibly could, just one after another, bam, bam, bam. And then they'd be like edited like on the spot and then we would voice over them in one take. Ah, it was amazing. And and then I used uh, brown. I used some brown paints and I put that on the base. And, and then I used, I used uh, uh, tan, white. And then I used white paints. Like that was, <laughs> that was the old videos. And now we're a little bit better. Ah, super, super excited about the new space. We have so many quality of life changes that are gonna make videos an absolute blast. It is sad not to have my old toys around me, but I have my proper toys, my miniatures, my models, my boxes, my codexes. This is a shrine to Wargaming now, whereas before it was more of a shrine to nerddom. Now it is a shrine to the tabletop hobby scene. And if you guys like tabletop hobbying, and I know you do, otherwise you got really far into this video for nothing. But uh, if you like the videos that we make and you want to see us make more, the best way to support us is by becoming a member of our Patreon. Over there, you're going to get access to some behind the scenes. You're going to get to vote on what models I paint live on YouTube. You're going to be able to join a live hobby hangout every single week. Terrain, STLs, and shows. Unique shows only for patrons. And more. But with that said, ah, uh, that's that Patreon spiel. Takes me back to some of the old sets as well. And this table, this table has made it through a lot of this YouTube career. This old Ikea table that is covered in paint. I mean, the reason it's covered in paint was because at first we thought that was a cute idea, have a table covered in paint, and then I wouldn't have to be careful in the videos. And But then it looked really, really bad. It just looked like a dirty table. And so then I decided to paint it in kind of a rainbow, and that worked pretty well. But then I was scared of hurting the rainbow paint job I did on the table. But now this is just the presentation space. Sometimes I'll probably do some painting and modeling on this desk, but I have a new space for that. Stay tuned. But that brings this episode of Miles and Memories to a close. Now it's time for the real star of the show, this week's EOB Complete Submissions. I hope you found this uh, video helpful. Thanks for watching. We put out a challenge to our community to send us before and after photos of their recently finished models to be immortalized in our videos. 
If you want to join in the fun, you can submit a before and after photo of your painted mini to our Discord server, which you can find in the description below, or you can post it to Instagram with the hashtag EOBcomplete. Without further ado, let's look at and get inspired by what the folks have finished this week. A Veteran Guardsman Commander by Disco, a Space Marine Eradicator by Akuma, a Fisherman Bard by Xanther, a Custom of Fiston for Kill Team by Gremlins Eat 2, a Dino Bust by Dwarven, some Battletech Mechs by Zephyr, an Orc Weird Boy by Khan Industries, some Legion Arc Troopers by Westda, a Bomb Squig by Falling Bravely, a Malifaux Whiskey Golem by Last Phoenix 81, a Sister of Battle Dog Mata by Pharaoh Von Sephiro, some Necron Lich Guard by Rattail91, a Veteran Guardsman Kill Team by Purple Spark Alice, a Classic Space Marine by Bastion, a Xenomorph Dragon by Darth Blasphemous, a Frightening Dragon by Master Builder 75, an Imperial Knight by by Maul, an Orc Def Dread by Reckies, an Intercessor Space Marine by Red Baron 62232, a Primaris Heavy Intercessor by Cayman Rider Hammer, some Cadian Guardsmen by Chukka, some Kill Team Tokens by Brooks Mick, an Orc Megaboss by Chulak, a Nurgle Glotkin by Razakar, a Tyranid Xanthrope by Heavy Slug, a Gazghoul Thraka by Witness My Minis, some Assault Intercessors by Pro Tech, and some Necron Lich Guard by Gustavo DeVasto. Congratulations to everyone for a job well done. It's no small feat to get paint on minis and you all should feel really proud. Nothing gets the hobby juices flowing like finishing a project when we all thank you for sharing your work, motivating us and the hobby community to paint our plastic. Thanks for sharing.